For a Pokemon with close to zero competitive usage, Probopass is actually cracked right now. Its insane bulk with its base 145 physical defense and 150 special defense make it an absolute pain to take out, but it also helps it offensively. Its ability Magnet Pole can trap Steel types from switching out and proceed to set up with Substitute along with Iron Defense to double its already solid defense stat. We can then use Body Press, which is a fighting move that takes physical defense stat as attack, and this little nosy fella can start to get out of hand. Terra Flying helps out defensively, and it can use things like Earth Power or Flash Cannon for some solid coverage. Probopass is very overlooked, but honestly, this weird dude can be a monster. Alright, all I'm saying is people are not giving enough respect to the magnetic mustache, and that is what I'm here for. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k. I'd love to have you as part of the journey, and with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. So I will start off by saying, Probopass is the kind of guy that I always just slap on teams, and it always ends up feeling like he provides way more value than you'd expect, and it happens more often than you would think. But as I decide to lead off with the big white girl with the booty, my opponent has the Clod Sire. And I'm just gonna set up some Stealth Rock here. I don't really imagine Clod Sire has much to do to me other than set up some Stealth Rock. But he actually ends up going for the Toxic, which is kind of fine. It is one way to slowly whittle down the absolute juggernaut that is Blissey. However, I also have the Natural Cure ability. So I can just switch out and just do my Pokemon Center duties to myself, and then we're healed. So. I also don't really do have much to do to the Claude Sire, so I'm thinking I have a little bit of a plan. Now, looking at my squad, nothing really does much to this damn thing. Claude Sire is also the kind of guy that just sticks around and literally just never dies, especially because it can be, like, unaware. Most of the time, people run in Water Absorb, but I decide I'm gonna switch into Floppy. Now, I got my arms just flopping around all crazy, and as they do set up the Stealth Rock, I'm thinking one way that I can at least guarantee that this thing will eventually die is go for a knockoff. I tell his ass, to knock it off and I do get rid of the leftovers that they're holding as they actually just end up going for the toxic on the Mian Chao, which is fine with me. This thing isn't really generally here to stay in for that many turns anyway. We kind of just come in, bop some stuff, and then regenerate some health as we switch out. So as I do get poisoned, Mian Chao does not really care. So trying to formulate a plan versus the Claude Sire is actually kind of a wild one. And it turns out my best option here is just to go right back into the Blissey, they're gonna be like, hey, what the hell, I thought I just poisoned that hoe a minute ago. In fact, I come out and my egg is looking as healthy as ever. So, as they actually end up going for the recover, that's when I realize this is gonna be quite an annoying process. Claude Sire versus Blissey is the exact type of shit that's definitely gonna get the offensive blood pumping. So, as we're both eating some leftovers, or at least, sorry, I am, his is on the floor, and I'm thinking I can kinda go for some seismic tosses here, seeing that recover, is a bit annoying, but honestly, I just kind of want to scout and see what they want to do to the Blissey. They probably can't Toxic here, and as I Seismic Toss, I'm like, okay, it's not doing much with that 50 HP, but they do, in fact, just Toxic me again. But he just does not want these eggs to go unpoisoned, and uh, this, is, again, is not a great matchup for me. Knowing that this thing can just recover, I gotta figure out a plan. Now, my main option would be to go into the Meowstic, but now I'm sitting here worried that they're gonna go for an Earthquake on the turn that I switch Meowstic in, and you may have noticed that I am working with the eject button on that fella. The reason is because this team is kind of trying to revolve around going for gravity along with Flapple. If you've not seen the Flapple Grav Apple video, I definitely recommend. But as they go for the Earthquake there, I am glad that I did not switch into the Meowstic. Um, because again, I don't really want to burn that um, eject button early. As trying to set up Flapple is main priority. So, as I'm looking at it here... Surely, they're gonna go for something like a recover here, and I'm pretty confident that they're not gonna attack. So, I just decided to switch into the Meowstic, and I can try to get myself at least a little bit of damn momentum here, with everybody just being so bulky around these parts. So, Meowstic comes in, and they do end up going for the recover. So, you're thinking to yourself, are we ever gonna get past the, the wall that is this blob of poo on the other side? Probably not, but I do remain hopeful. So, at this point, I can threaten this thing out with a Psychic, and as they do have a dark type switch in, I'm just gonna click it anyway, because I'm like, dude, this Claude Sire is absolutely grinding my gears. So I'm just gonna go for that psychic. As it turns out, they do in fact bring out the Amoongus with freaking curtains. Buddy's looking emo over there. Actually. Samantha? <laughs> Alright, I have now told the fiance to be quiet, and now we can continue. So this thing comes in, it obviously is gonna activate a booster energy, get a nice little attack boost, and I cannot in fact psychic the fella. So I find myself in a spot here where 
I'm kind of thinking I do want to conserve the Meowstic. It can go for like a sucker punch here, but in general, I'm not going to have a great time versus the, uh, the, the freaking Brute Bonnet. So I decided to switch into the Zeb Strike, a kind of a Hail Mary move, thinking maybe they go for a Spore. Because this thick-ass zebra actually has the Sap Zipper ability. Would come in, grab myself an attack boost, and then I can threaten it with things like a Flame Charge slash Overheat. So, as they actually end up going for the growth, I'm like, that is a big-ass mushroom. And now the Sucker Punch is going to be enough to take care of me. It's sitting at plus two attack, and we found ourselves in a spot where I did not expect the Bonnet to be scary, but here we are. So, looking at this matchup, obviously Zeb Striker just goes down for damn nothing. And I was really kind of hoping I was going to get myself a little sap sipper action. We were thirsty as hell for some sap, as zebras generally be. But I can bring in the Mian Shao at this point. And I imagine they don't really want to sucker punch even at plus two here. And I can go for a U-turn. It covers for a potential switch. But it also just is a four times hit versus uh, the Brute Bonnet. So they're going to go right back into the damn arch nemesis, the Clodsire here. And as I get myself a U-turn on it, at least I have some decisions to make. Now, as I'm looking at it here... Guess what time it is? It is nose time and the, the best time. I'm gonna end up going into Proba Pass because as I realize that this thing cannot toxic me, the best it can do is go for earthquakes. And honestly, Ned Flanders freaking Super Mario comes out here looking gold as hell. The thing is, as soon as Nigel Thornberry comes out here, it's about to get serious and nosy out here. So after some leftovers, I am at full. And I imagine this Claude Sire probably goes for an earthquake. So I'm thinking I'm gonna bust out the feathers on the Metal Nose guy, I'm going to go for the Terra Flying, but they actually just end up switching out here. And that is totally fine by me. It still means that I'm going to be able to get up a free substitute as they actually just go right back into Brute Bonnet. So this thing comes in looking at the nose thinking, damn, that thing is massive. And now we're going to be flying around. So I go for that Terra Flying, which there's a lot of Terra options for this set on the Probe Path, but I just find any Terra, you know, with an absolute immunity just gives you so much... Better momentum if you're able to get up a free substitute. So I go for that Terra Flying basically for nothing at this point uh, But now I'm just gonna go ahead and stir the pot a little bit with a little substitute So the sub is great because after some leftovers we're obviously still healthy and Looking at Brute Bonnet it's not gonna have much to do to a flying type Probo Pass, which is just a weird-ass situation This is what Pokemon has come to in 2024. We got an evil Prehistoric Curtain Mushroom versus a Flying Type Golden Nose. They do go for the Crunch. Obviously, it is faster because Probo Pass does not have one thing going for it, and that is speed. But that's fine. You don't need speed when you never die, baby. It does break the Substitute with the Crunch, but that allows me to now bust out the big ol' Shield and go for the Iron Defense, which is great. Now my Defense that was already insane is now doubled. And as they're probably looking at this thing thinking, that is not great news. I'm going to go for a Substitute here. Just because it seems like the body press is pretty obvious at this point. And if I can catch a switch on the substitute for free, that feels pretty good. But they actually just end up going for the growth. And uh, as they do get the plus one attack, I'm still at plus two defense. And it's kind of a battle you're probably not going to be able to win versus the boy Ned here. So I get up the substitute, and that is going to be a free one. Now at plus two defense, I'm like, I'm just going to go for another iron defense. I basically... I find myself in a position in this game where Ned has taken over. This is now a Probo Pass spotlight, and it is time to see how far we can get this bad boy to go. I go for another one as they actually just go for a second growth. And once again, as I go for the sharp boost, their single growths without the sun is not going to not gonna cut it. The snowball effect is absolutely happening for the Probo Pass here. And while we do have really good uh, physical defense, obviously with that iron defense, our natural special defense is honestly so insane as well, but it's like, you can't hit me on the physical side, and if you want to hit me on the special side, you're, you're also going to have a bad time. So, they go for the crunch, take a bite out of the bean bag, and it does not even break the substitute, and now I just go ahead and hit it with a nose press that does take care of the brute bonnet, obviously with a super effective hit, but also because I am at plus four defense, and we are still just absolutely floating around as a freaking substitute here, and with some leftovers, we're still just extremely healthy so we do have some interesting things that they can bust out here as they decide to go into the pre marina um, they are probably thinking hey i can actually bypass the substitute hit it on the special side and try to get something going but here's the thing i'm just going to go for the body press regardless it's not going to be a very effective hit but it's still going to do a bunch of damage and they actually end up going for the terra here um, so pre marina commits the terra ends up going for the fire and that 
I kind of imagine maybe they expected me to go for like a super effective electric type attack at this point, but that actually ends up working out pretty well for me because as they go for the sparkling aria, it does bypass the substitute and just get some damage directly on the probo pass, but it doesn't do much. And as the body press is now just neutral, it actually just takes care of the pre-marina. So that worked out perfectly because uh, since they bypassed the sub, the substitute is still up and I'm just over here munching on a damn apple and we are still relatively healthy and behind the substitute and this is an exact display of how Probopass can just get out of hand. So, they now decide to bring in the Combo. Oh, Buddy is looking gold and pink, repping the weird ass color combo. However, this thing also has the opportunity to bypass substitute with Boom Burst and that's kind of what I'm thinking they're gonna do. They do bust out the Boom Burst and guess what? That only does like 30% to me. I'm able to live with 30 HP and as they activate a little bit of a throat spray, that is going to be this thing's last meal. Because a body press coming in with plus four defense, absolutely turn him into a pancake with a freaking nose imprint on it. And that is going to take care of Combo, -O, which is one of the bigger threats to deal with. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. Like they're getting damage on the Proba Pass. However, they're just not breaking the substitute. So honestly, it kind of ends up working out in my favor. Because as now they go into the Corviknight, this is the kind of big metal flying bastard that can only hit you on the physical side and I do I do have some HP gun on the substitute but I still feel like I have the longevity you know, with the health that I'm at. So I'm just going to go for the body press as they actually click the roost and this is kind of an interesting play here because the roost is going to bring it to full after the stealth rock chip but now it just lost the flying type and so body press just easily knocks it out and I don't really know what the, the, the roost there was interesting however I do take some rocky helmet chip. I am still behind the substitute, which is fantastic, and now I believe they are down to two Pokemon left. They do obviously have the Claude Sire that was a pain earlier, but honestly, it looks fine now. But then they also have the uh, Serledge, Cerulege, friggin' Sword Guy comes in, and uh, this thing can only... I imagine they are probably reluctant to use this earlier just because it can only hit for physical damage. And again, my physical defense is absolutely insane. They go for the Bitter Blade, which... It's going to at least pull some stuffing out of the substitute, which is fine. So the sub does fade, but the reason why the Cerulege was actually a decent check was just because obviously I cannot body press it. But they have not seen the fourth move, which is actually going to be the Earth Power. So mess around with some fourth move slots on this thing. Earth Power just does cover uh, for this thing. It doesn't do a whole lot of damage because we kind of hit like a like nothing on the special side. Yeah, base 75 special attack and 55 attack so it's like body press is kind of just the main option here but as they go for another bitter blade it does absolutely nothing it literally doesn't even scratch the boy hardly could even pull a nose hair out with that i can then go for another earth power it actually does live because again we are out of here weak but it literally does not matter as long as you can just stay alive and that's kind of the name of the game when it comes to proba pass this honestly is a pretty evil fella and I respect this guy for even <laughs> staying in the game. Goes for another Bitter Blade, which I actually, again, live. Somehow, the Probo Pass just never dies. This thing feels invincible is if you have even just one Iron Defense, let alone two. So, one more Earth Power is going to take care of the Sword Sharp Fella. And now the last Pokemon is going to be the Clod Sire. At this point, Ned has absolutely surpassed expectations. If I can get through... Uh, the Claude Sire somehow, this would be an absolute body bag for the ages for the Probo Pass. And that is the damn goal. So as Mr. Hanky the Christmas Poo comes in, uh, some Stealth Rock Chip does a little bit, but then I'm like, I'm just going to body press here. I imagine it's just going to be uh, a Water Absorb set. It does actually do a decent bit even through the not very effective hit. And they probably only have Toxic, toxic to hit me with. It doesn't really have the ability to Earthquake now. It potentially had something like a Poison Jab, but... I take the Toxic and that is fine because, again, after some leftovers, I can take at least you know, one turn of the Toxic here and I'm like, oh, it is going down. And this is actually nice because I am faster than uh, the Claude Sire, so I go for another Body Press and that is going to take care of it. And that was the most ridiculous Proba Pass game of all damn time. This thing just finds itself into situations where I'm like, oh, this is now the win condition and people are not respecting the damn nose. So that is going to do it for the match and that was just kind of stupid and also fun but that also now is going to bring us into game number two so this time my opponent's team looks very threatening they got four legendaries and some nonsense but as long as you have the probo pass it is literally fine let's jump into it all right so this time my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the gastrodon and 
this little sea slug fella is kind of fine with me. I'm just going to lead off with the me and Xiao just as a nice little fast pivot. Wasn't really sure what they wanted to lead with. But this at least gives me the option to go for U-turn and figure out what I want to do. Uh, obviously, I do have the apple. Turns out Gastrodon is in fact allergic to apples. But as I'm looking at it, I do want to try to take my time here, go into the Blissey and try to set up the Stealth Rock and be able to at least punish some switching around. So they actually set up the Stealth Rock of their own, which is kind of fine. As I know this thing really cannot hurt Blissey. I'm bold max defense. And this Blissey is just honestly evil. I don't know why the hell I threw this homegirl on the team. But uh, she's here just to absolutely be a menace. So I'm going to go for the Stealth Rock here. Kind of want to see what the Gastrodon wants to do. As they're actually just going to end up swapping out. As uh, I'm going to be able to get up my Stealth Rock here. They decide to go into Salazzle. So Salazzle comes in, stamps the hell up. As I throw some imaginary Stealth Rock. For some reason the animation just does not go. Because my game... I don't know if I'm the only one that has this problem. My game is just always broken. I literally don't know. So... They go for the Toxic here. People just love to try to Toxic the Blissey, but I'm naturally able to cure that. I am a healing egg. We do not care. I, I go for the Thunder Wave. I do want to try to limit this thing's speed. As again, mode number one is trying to get Flapple to sweep on this squad. So getting the Paralyze there is going to make my life a whole lot easier versus Lazzle. That thing is quick. You can just tell she, she'd be running. Look at them thighs. So... I decided to just go for the Seismic Toss. I'm really not worried about anything Salazzle can do to Blissey, obviously, as they're you know, primarily just going to be a special attacker. I just go for the Seismic Toss. As it turns out, they're going to go for the Substitute. So a little sub-toxic Salazzle here for some support shenanigans. The uh, Seismic Toss does at least break the Substitute every time, which is great. But also, having the Para there, it just kind of guarantees that this thing eventually is going to be stuck, unable to move. So... Thinking about it here, I imagine they probably don't go for another substitute. However, they're just watching the Toxic start to stack up on the Blissey, and I'm like, I should probably go ahead and heal the girl up. So I'm actually just going to switch right into the Mian Shao, as it's kind of a safe bet because I know I can take at least one attack from whatever Slazzle wants to do. I can then outspeed, um, but they actually end up going for the switch. They're going to bring in the uh, Gouging Fire. Now, Gouging Fire comes in with his crazy-ass head shield, and this is kind of one of the main things that I am worried about. So, as Mian Chao comes in, did not expect to see this big fella. And as I'm looking at it, the one thing I'm super worried about from Gouging Fire is a Dragon Dance setup. If, they, if this thing starts to get two Dragon Dances, I am frightened. So, as I go for the U-turn, I realize immediately that I am about to touch that crazy-ass hot shield and get burnt. They do go for the Burning Bulwark, and that was a bad, that was a bad call on my end. I should definitely have not clicked U-turn there because... First of all, I wasn't going to do any damage anyway, but so I should have hard swapped. But now I just get burnt, and I'm an idiot. So, I, yeah, I really kind of just thought maybe this thing was going to be, like, banded, or just go for the Dragon Dance there. Now I'm just going like, to go for the U-turn this time to do even less damage than I would have before, as I need to figure out a plan versus this fella, because this thing can get out of hand. But, you know who's good at dealing it with stuff that is scary? The freaking nose, man. I'm going to go into... The Probo Pass here, just because as I come in, I got the mustache flying in the wind. Um, they actually do go for the Dragon Dance here. So at plus one, this thing isn't necessarily super duper scary. I am at least a little bit frightened, but at plus one, I know I can take attacks. I am max defense on this set, and I'm chilling at full health. So I'm thinking Probo Pass with my little Lego piece on my head should be able to at least try to 1v1 this. So... I'm actually going to go for an Iron Defense. If they want to stay in and go for some damage just to scout, I'm going to double that defense immediately. And they decide that's probably not a fight they want to pick. They decide to switch out of here and go into Gastrodon, which is actually pretty solid. While Gastrodon does obviously threaten me with um, like an Earth Power, things like that, able to hit me on the special side, I, once again, still just have so much natural bulk that I am not afraid of no damn Sea Slug. So I go for the Iron Defense there. Now we are boosted as hell. And uh, this thing is not going anywhere anytime soon. So I can now just go for a body press. And it does not quite have enough damage to knock the fella out. So they decide to go for the chilling water. Which, first of all, doesn't do anything to me. A little, little cold water. A little water ice bucket challenge. Ned Flanders does not give a damn about. Mustache is a little bit wet and chilly. However, it does drop my physical attack. We do not care about our physical attack at all. Because we're just using our defense in damage calculation anyway. And so now they're like, uh-oh, the Proba Pass has officially already become a problem. Sometimes all you need is literally like one setup with an iron defense. So they decide to swap the Gastrodon out. They're going to go back into Salazzle, which 
is paralyzed and that makes me feel a whole lot better so as i substitute on the switch now things have gotten way more out of control obviously salazzle cannot hit me you know with a toxic or any poison for that matter but also hey, now it's gonna have to deal with the substitute so while i can't necessarily body press this thing for that great of damage we do have the earth power so they go for the substitute they are still faster even being paralyzed this thing in a damn wheelchair is faster than my nose and so I do at least go for that earth power, break the substitute immediately, and it's kind of just like a ticking... The, the Proba Pass is a ticking time bomb at this point. It's like, you either have to deal with it, like, right away, or this thing is going to be such a problem that it's just kind of hilarious. So, so Lazzle, it basically at this point, it's going to get fully paralyzed. They know I have the coverage with earth power, and it's kind of just a hilarious game of me just sitting over here behind my substitute, eating an apple, and just having a good time on the beach, for the most part. So, they are going to switch out. Salazzle doesn't have super great utility left. It has to come in and, you know, take like a, another stealth rock chip. They decide to bring in Landorus, and it cannot intimidate through my substitute. It does not really matter. Once again, our physical attack is basically useless here. So the Earth Power, obviously Buddy's just standing above it. He's like, oh yeah? Watch this. I just stand here. And I'm going to stand here and eat some leftovers, which I think the animation doesn't go down, but it's fine. I'm eating leftovers regardless. And I'm like, you know what? This would be a hilarious opportunity to go for the Terra Flying. I expect that they're likely just going to go for the Earthquake, or if they're a special attacking set, whatever ground move they want to go for. But I do not give a damn because I am a freaking bird now. I got my balloons on my head, looking as ridiculous as a Pokemon possibly can. And being behind a substitute with the ground immunity now, I'm really hoping that they go for the Earthquake, which they do, and we're just floating above it. <laughs> The substitute stays intact, and the dagger is that I can just go for another iron defense here. I'm now sitting at plus four, and it is absolutely, it, it's out of hand out here. That is why we love the Terra Flying, because even after some leftovers, we are basically fully healthy here, and body press is going to be enough to essentially kill everything. The attack power from a body press is honestly nuts. So they are going to switch out the Landris. They're like, hey, maybe this thing can help out later. I can at least give it a whirl. And something is about to get nose pressed as they do go into the gouging fire here. Uh, the body press comes out and it doesn't do quite enough to grab a kill, but it does get us in a nice little two hit KO situation. But also, I'm still behind a substitute. And once again, I have two iron defenses. I don't know if you saw the damn crystal shield or not, but uh, we're pretty much an invincible fella over here. So they are going to be able to go for a burning bulwark. I do expect that. They probably are like, hey, maybe I can burn this thing. This guy's surely going to fall for it twice. I actually just go for another iron defense. Surely they just went for that protect. And now at plus six defense, not only are they not going to be able to attack me at all, at least on the physical side, I am now going to be able to basically just obliterate everything with a body press. And we're at full health, and we're behind a substitute. And sometimes you just got to feel bad for the homie. They do go for the temper flare because sometimes the temper flares up when the probe would pass starts going crazy which that doesn't even break the substitute which is hilarious a body press now finishes off uh, the gouging fire which is again a massive threat and has the ability to completely sway a game but now buddy is burning bulwarking in freaking hell so i get some leftovers once again and at this point i'm like i just basically need to see how long they're gonna deal with this nonsense that is this probo pass and as they bring in latios i am flying type here so they do have the benefit of potentially having some coverage and they're like, if I can't touch this thing on the physical side, maybe on the special side, they do go for an ice beam. So they do have the super effective hit, but luckily that is exactly what we got our little substitute doll for. And it is going to end up breaking the sub. But uh, Ned is still completely chilling behind it. I bust myself out and nose press him, which does actually kill the Latios with a critical hit, mind you. But doesn't really matter. Thing just goes down. And Ned is an absolute god at this point. People are sleeping on the Proba Pass. I swear to God. It was icing on the cake is that I'm at full HP. They basically have nothing that can touch Probo Pass at this point. So I'm kind of like, this is this is kind of the checkmate situation where as that Castrodon comes in, we already saw that I'm faster. I can kill it with a body press. They are, in fact, going to go ahead and save the lives of their final Pokemon. And Probo Pass has officially caused a rage quit once again. So that is going to do it. This thing is hilarious to use. And honestly, always, it feels like it's very easy to get set up. I don't know. Probopass, strange Pokemon. People need to use it more often. See you later.